it was surprisingly easy to replace the sky in uh, photo P. Uh, part of that is because of how uh, sharp that background edge is in this photograph and uh, the fact that it is one solid color. It's almost white up there. <clears throat> So here's the way I went about it. I don't typically use the magic wand selection tool, but uh, it just happened to work really well for this because it's one solid flat color. Um, so if I click back here with the magic wand and try to select that, there we go, it's selected. Uh, I did a pretty good job, but I'm going to attempt to refine the edge. So I'm going to click on Refine Edge in the top selection menu. That should launch the Refine Edge program. I'm going to use the gray here and a smaller brush to just paint along this edge. And what that's supposed to do is try and touch up the feathering of the edge between that sharp color and the trees. So I'm gonna drag that across. Uh, it's going to do what it does to try and soften the edge and blend it in a little bit more. So I think that's good enough. That's the way I used it and it created a selection of the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a new layer so it makes it easy to select. I'll hit OK. And you'll see that I now have the sky selected as a new layer. Uh, if I turn this back on, it looks about the same as normal. Now I went to Google Chrome or Google Images to search for beautiful skies. Uh, once again, since we are working with a high resolution image, an original image that I took, um, there's very high resolution, a lot of pixels there. I had to make sure that I turned on tools and searched for large skies. And even at that, it's not going to be great. Um, but this is one of the better skies that I felt like fit the coloring of my scene here. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, it's 2400 by 1600. I'm going to open that in a new tab. I'm going to close my search tab. And I'm going to copy the URL. And that's going to allow me to go to File, Open from URL paste it in there. I'm going to paste it into the current project. Hit OK. Notice even though it's pretty high resolution one that I found, it's still not as high resolution as my original image. So I am going to have to enlarge this a little bit. I do hate scaling up photos in Photoshop. I think it's poor practice to do so because you're trying to stretch resolution that isn't there. But for this particular instance, it's going to have to be OK. So that was placed in there. It's currently a smart object, and I think that's going to have to be OK for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Command key on a Mac or Control key on Windows, and you're going to click on that layer that we created from the sky. And you notice it loads the selection of that layer. It's not actually selecting the layer, it just loaded the selection on the current layer. So I'm going to now create a layer mask by clicking on the white rectangle with the black dot. And you'll notice that it attempts to mask out that sky. Now, if I were to attempt to try and move around the sky right now, what would happen is the mask would move with it. That's not what I want. So I'm going to undo that. I need to turn off this link that links the mask to the picture. So if I uncheck the link, now they're no longer linked together. Now, if I were to try to move this, it would actually move the mask instead of the sky, which is not what I want. I need to make sure I have the actual sky image selected. And now I can move the sky around and the mask stays put, which is what I wanted. 
So I'm going to move this up to the point where I like the cloud cover that I've got. I think I want just a little bit of the sun poking through there. And now I've got it. Now that doesn't look too realistic right now because um, it's still got this really light glow from the previous light sky. So Photoshop in its new 2021 uh, actually does some color blending with another version of the sky. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and drag it down to the new layer icon. Make sure you don't hit the trash can icon by mistake. I'm going to drag it below here. And what I'm going to do is actually turn on overlay. Now, currently, that doesn't look like it's doing anything because it's actually hiding behind the previous layer. Uh, and I'm going to go to the layer mask. And in the layer mask is where I'm going to use the gradient tool. We've done this once before. The gradient tool is going to give me a soft blend from black to white, which is kind of what I want. That's not quite what I was looking for. Let's go in the opposite direction here and let's see what that looks like. There we go. Okay, so that's a little bit harsh. You can see that it kind of blended the coloring of um, the uh, sunset image on top of the grass and the plants, which is what I wanted. I'm going to turn off the white layer in the background so I get rid of the little bit of glow. So that was the original sky background that I used for the mask. So that got rid of a little bit of the glow. And I'm going to play with the opacity until I'm happy with it. So I'm clicking on opacity and I'm dragging until I like what I see. I think about 75% is pretty good. So now I have the layer mask over here with a nice gradient on it. And I can move that gradient down a little bit. So there it is. I have that selected. If I use the move tool, I should be able to move that down. If it lets me. There we go. Might have to adjust here, sorry. That was not what I wanted. A little bit too much of the sun showing through there, so I'm gonna paint that out with a little bit of black. The air mass, there we go. So that kind of softens that area. And that's pretty well blended. So I've just replaced the sky in Photo P. And now those two layers are there. Now I can continue to adjust the colors of 